to know. Play with the light. Is that better? <laughs> First one is better. First one's better. Okay. Yeah, so we'll talk about the different phases of feminism today. And, in, and I have put them there, including class, color, gender, culture, and religion. You fall asleep, let me know. So we'll look at the role of education on studying women in general. Uh, warning, please be prepared to be shocked. <laughs> We're all adults, aren't we? <laughs> and ground rules, I, I enjoyed it, how you did it this morning. When you have questions, just shoot. So you don't keep the burning question burning. Let it out, and then we can deal with it immediately. Okay, so that was very good. Now, for whom is feminism? Let's go around the table. Shall we go clockwise or counterclockwise? Okay, we can start with you. something that they believe is what's right to believe in, like that idea or, or that uh, mindset will always exist. Okay. So an, an idea of a sense of some form of, I guess, improvement or a better uh, way of life. And so, uh, but I definitely idealism, like something that exists. Okay, could we, can I ask you, those who have spoken, to put one or two or three key words in the board, please? Yeah. Next, please. There are marker pen, maybe here. Equal rights. Yeah. Equal rights. There will be more activities there, so could we fill this side oh, for yeah. this? Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. Equal rights. Equal rights. All right. Thank you. Yeah, please. Um, well, and on your first slide, like feminist pedagogy is a style of learning. Okay. And how we, um, pedagogy, you said? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Feminist pedagogy is a style of learning. Okay. How how people learn and using yeah. that as a value, as a valuable technique about how to get people to want to be able to people to learn. Okay. Where does a woman come in? Um, it's their experiences as a woman are a, are a valuable resource in being able to um, uh, trigger or trigger not get triggers, uh, manifest learning. That there's that there's value in their individual experience as a woman, and that leads to greater learning. Thank you. Uh, yeah, please. Um, I heard someone interviewed um, not too long ago, a woman who was asked, are you a radical feminist? Yeah. And she said, well, I define a, fem a feminist as anyone who believes that women have rights, have equal rights to men, and if that's a radical idea, then I guess I am. That was how she responded. So, with that equality in mind, I think of it as applying to women and men because it's really saying equality of rights. It's not saying women are superior in any way. All right, sounds good. Please, please. next, please. Um, I just see it as um, empowering women, like right. just like a movement almost. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if he has it on the board already. Oh, okay, that's fine. Thank you. Again, I think it's for all, um, because if you look at any community or society, 
why would you want to lose half of your skills and talents? Right. So again, the idea of, of women yeah. um, on the same level as men. Thank you so much. Okay, so remember all of your ideas, like it's for men and women, it's an idea, it's for equality, it's not one over the other, it's based on practice and how people learn, and so on and so forth. Keep those in mind as we go along this journey this afternoon, after heavy lunch and sleepiness. Hey, now, since I don't know you, you all know each other, that's unfair, is it? <laughs> oh, okay, so let's go counterclockwise now. Uh, identify yourself for my sake. And the first question was for whom? Now, if you can add something else, that's fine. If you have something in mind. And please use this side of the board now. Okay, can we go your way? Sure. Okay. I'm please. Jennifer Coates. Copy Jennifer. Um, I'm in the DACA program for adult and higher ed. Are you on more on the higher or more on the adult? Uh, more on the adult. Oh, okay, great. This is the class word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Cassandra Hughes, and I'm um, in the doctoral program in instructional technology. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Len Brinstead. I'm in the uh, doctoral program in adult and higher education. Thank you. Okay. Um, Stacia Klassen. I'm in the doctoral program for adult and Brian Carrington, um, Don't Hire Ed. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jamie Robertson, uh, Minimum Masters in Don't Hire Ed. Uh, Jeff Salmon, uh, Masters in Don't Hire Ed. So, do I take only Cassandra? Is a I guess I'm the only different one. Okay, yeah. so we're <laughs> friends here. We're not alone. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, <clears throat> Uh, this might be tough, but this will not be taken against you. But what you have heard, okay, what are some stereotypes you have heard about feminism? And then please write them here. This will not be taken against you. Just what you have heard, okay, about feminism. It could be a word, a phrase, a sentence. It's, a, it's an old concept from the 1960s. Okay, please. I have, um... Yeah. Um, I just lost it. Um, <laughs> um, burning bras. Yeah, that was a very famous incident. Right. Okay. As he touched on before, feminism, very happy feminism is that it's radical. Radical, yeah. Okay. Feminazi. Okay. I'll write it down because I still remember it. <laughs> Feminazi. She was laughing too. She's a feminist, you know that. <laughs> okay. So these are all the stereotypes. Let's get them all out, okay? Now, done with the stereotypes. So we'll be bashing maybe the stereotypes now. Okay. So you must these are all memes that are, you know, shared and shared on the internet. I didn't come from your rib, you came from my vagina. Okay, that's a strong statement like, uh, wait a minute, what perspective are we looking at? From whose point of view? Okay, you may disagree, but that's one very important line. 
And you know, I think pink is uh, or purple or violet. Those are colors, and like what she's wearing too, are feminist colors. Now, some other stereotypes would be, you know, if you're a man, automatically you're better in math. The stereotype. And if you're a woman, like, huh? <laughs> it's, it's so bad, right? These are the stereotypes, and it reproduces itself. If we think men are good, and we bring them to engineering, and we think girls are not, then we don't encourage girls and women to go to, to you know, math and sciences, then we're recreating this system that we are opposed to. Okay, so th this would be the outline uh, that we will be discussing, the introduction, then what are the major findings okay, of this, and then the conclusion. Who is she, by the way? Do you know her? She's world famous. Now, guess. Okay, she's not American. Okay, second hint. She's European. <laughs> That's closer. Okay, she's not from the con she's not from the island. She's from the continent in Europe. Okay, that's already four tips. <laughs> Fifth tip. She speaks French. Okay. I don't know French. Oh, you don't know her? That's I don't know French feminist at all. Oh, that's fine. Okay, you don't have to be feminist to know her. Okay, that's a good starting point. Sixth tip, she's an existentialist, a very famous existentialist. Okay, no excuse, you don't know any feminists at all. I don't know many existentialists. <laughs> okay, she is Simone. Oh, I've heard her name. Yeah, yeah, people have heard her name. De Beauvoir. Okay, she's a very famous uh, feminist, an existentialist feminist. We'll talk about what she talks about later. Okay, so introduction, the first part <clears throat> would be, we're looking at uh, the fact is women are half or more than half of the world's population. It's an original expression in English, it's translated as women hold half the sky. Okay, it's a revolutionary slogan from Mao's China. Who's Mao? Chairman Mao. Chairman Mao, okay. So he's so famous. But a problem, a couple of problems uh, would arise. Number one, we don't often talk about women okay, in the literature. Okay, if we do, it's oftentimes in the negative way. Okay, so women are misrepresented if they at all exist in the literature. So those are two major problems in, when we talk about women in society. Okay, uh, so problem is even worse. Uh, Marion Bartoli is the champion of the Wimbledon uh, tennis game, but she's called as undeserving, ugly, fat slut. Okay, so what has that got to do her winning the Wimbledon? See, that's a problem. This is across the media. And if you go to bbc.com and the comments on her winning this, uh, it's, it's the uh, presenter who started this, calling her that she wasn't a looker. And you can post your comments. They were all so negative. Like, why did she win? She doesn't look like a winner. Like, what is the winner's look? It's all stereotype of how women are uh, objectified in the media. You have to, people were saying she should be the winner because she looks it. Like, what's the look of a winner, right? That's a problem. And another one is, instead of talking about this, uh, the athlete, they're talking about the girlfriend of the athlete. Like, okay, isn't this a sports page? Aren't we talking about the athlete? Okay, these are all current events uh, that we see in the media. Okay, this is Bill Maher, you know him, right? He, 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 you know, he's sarcastic about what's going on in society. I'm tired of every politician being a medical genius, super genius on the V word. I want to hear gynecologists talk about the national debt. It's like apples dealing with oranges. Like, when did you become experts on women's health? So what you're saying, 
Well, why should men decide our destiny?